Oh yeah, you really hate Sonic the Hedgehog, don't you, Yards? That's why you can't keep your hands off him every time he brings a new game out, and know the complete history of the franchise and the names of all the characters, stammering, but it's not because I like you or anything. Why don't you finally stop lying to yourself, grab two fistfuls of blue quills and do something that will get you thrown out of a badge watching station? Look, I can't help it if Sonic the Hedgehog makes for such an effective dance partner in the course of my usual routine of taking the piss out of shit, if you'll forgive the technical lingo. Maybe I like being around him because he reminds me of my toddler, in that he always seems to find more and more new interesting things to do with shit. Anyway, I didn't go into Sonic Superstars firmly intending to review it. I should have been playing Spider-Man 2 this week, but I haven't quite finished the apology card and pasta picture I'm hoping will make Sony start sending us review codes again. But I still had other things to play, and it was only a fit of morbid curiosity that made me give Superstars a go, and I swiftly found I had a lot of discussion material to go over. A lot of it relating to shit. Again, like with my toddler. And it's not because Sonic Team never learn. They've learned enough to remove all spoken dialogue from Sonic Superstars, which was a definite step in the right direction for me, because every time Sonic opens his freakish side of the face mouth, I get mystic visions of Saved by the Bell characters sucking their own dick so hard that Spunk squirts out their tear ducts. The success of Sonic Mania has also caused Sonic Team to learn something, and that was to make a game that's basically Sonic Mania again, but with 3D graphics and 4-player co-op. Not that the second part means a whole lot to me, because the toddler isn't allowed to hold controllers until they've figured out what is and is not an appropriate place for shit. But it's a pretty serviceable single-player 2D Sonic game, that's kind of my problem. Sonic Mania and Sonic Superstars demonstrate the crucial difference between making a loving homage and just hacking out another one. Sonic Mania was infused with wing wing references to the older games, but at the same time elevated the material, adding new touch touches, details, a complexity that wasn't possible at the time. Sonic Superstars, meanwhile, is another 2D Sonic game. Seven or eight stages with the same themes as always. Remember when Sonic 2 had Casino Night Zone, and Sonic 3 had something similar called the Carnival Night Zone? Well, Sonic Pooper Stars has the Casino Carnival Zone, and that should clue you in as to what level of innovative spirit we're operating on here. Still, the gameplay has some new ideas. When you get Chaos Emeralds with the Sonic 3 style mid-stage minigames, each one grants a new superpower, ranging from a mid-air boost, the ability to turn into water, to reveal hidden objects, and that's officially all the ones I'm aware of because I spent the rest of my time with the game trying to beat the bonus level that unlocks the fifth emerald, and repeatedly failing the bastard. It involves chasing the emerald through a sort of star field in 3D space, boosting off of objects as you get close to them, but because you're in mid-air and there's no frame of reference for the relative positioning of objects and what direction they're moving in, the result is about as fun and intuitive as trying to isolate a single Cheerio from a bowl of the fuckers, while your spoon is tied to the ceiling fan with a bungee cord. And of the various stage-interrupting bonus rounds whose portals I keep accidentally bouncing into, it's still the more tolerable one. The one that you get at the checkpoint is a re hash of the bonus round from all the way back in Sonic 1 with the rotating background, and that music like you're being slowly dragged across broken glass by a merry-go-round. You know, the thing that was immediately dropped in the very first sequel because it killed the flow as assuredly as a hideous factory line accident. Wait, says Sonic Pooper Scooper, I think the flow's still twitching a bit, better make sure you do the minigame two more times to finish it off for good. What have you got against flow, Sonic Superbad? It's the excuse my wife always uses to get out of having sex with me. So I very firmly stopped voluntarily going into that particular bonus round, and not wanting to play a bonus round is like not wanting any cake. I Either you're ill, or something's gone very wrong with that cake. Anyway, the only reward for this minigame is big coins of initially unclear purpose, and that was when I started smelling a big blue pointy rat. Why does this game keep giving me big coins? I wondered. They're scattered about the maps, you get them as end level rewards, as well as if you go to the Chaos Emerald minigame twice in one stage, cause god forbid we make it any easier to collect the glittery bastards. And I was suspicious cause there's only a small semantic jump from big coin to premium currency. Detective Yahtzee was on the case. I quit out back to the main menu, whereupon a text box popped up saying would you like to spend your big coins in the cosmetics shop. Oh, Detective Yahtzee does it again. Not cosmetics for Sonic and pals to use in the campaign. God no, people kick up enough of a stink if his arms are blue instead of flesh tone. No, cosmetics for your robot avatar with which you play the online battle royale mode, and oh boy, at that point my curiosity was so morbid it was selling miniature coffins outside an American elementary school. Great big flesh tone willies to the campaign, that's just another pack of 2D Sonic levels with some irritating bonus levels and a fucking irritating final boss fight. I want to see this train wreck unfold. If it had actually been Sonic Battle Royale, a hundred Sonics cascading through a level together in a spectacular concentration of failure, rivalled only by a professional wrestler's music career, I'd have been down. Sadly, it's only ten players to a match, and it's closer in spirit to something like Fall Guys, a collection of quick free-for-all minigames, and then someone pretends to be the winner. When I say collection, I mean about four. A standard race, a collapsing platform's endurance-a-thon, a thing where you run around the arena collecting stars, which I came first in more than once by remaining perfectly still, and waiting for stars to randomly appear right next to my face. I ultimately came second in that tournament, and won eight big coins, with which I was able to buy eight tenths of one of the two paint colours available in the store at the time, which I could apply to precisely one body part. What are you selling this paint in? Yogurt pots? Oh, and when I say each match is ten players, that's only theoretically. In almost every match I got into, it was me, one other player with an elaborate outfit who'd clearly played this way too much, and eight bots. And that was the best it could do after making me wait five minutes for matchmaking. Apparently the game's sense of flow was still showing vague signs of brain activity. Maybe I wasn't playing at peak time. Maybe I should have waited till after the remedial schools chucked out. Never 
Nevertheless, I'm prepared to call time of death and declare Sonic Underpants a decisive shit extravaganza, which was also what I called the last time I gave my toddler banana oatmeal.